Well, it's a beautiful day out. Had a few storms. And uh, talked a buddy of mine into a new GS. So, uh, anyway, we're going to take you guys for a little spin. We're in between uh, thunderstorms. All right, well, it's all clear. White's got the car on the way over there. Yeah, well, you know, that's the nice thing about a GS is you don't really have to worry about roads and so on. You just you just go through your local ditch and do what you got to do. All righty. Off we go. Well, I have uh, officially uh, deemed myself the uh, Johnny Appleseed of the BMW GS. I've got, uh, I looked at this bike for, oh gosh, three or four years, I think, and uh, having had a lot of motorcycles, I mean, you know, well over a couple of dozen, probably over three dozen. Matter of fact, I'm certain it's over that. And I rode one of these, uh, the new liquid cooled models. I never had ridden one of the airheads or oil heads. And uh, first time I rode it, I said, man, this thing's pokey, it's goofy, it's too tall, it's, it's weird. And I grew up on uh, dirt bikes and, and mainly enduros. So I was used to, you know, tall bikes, wide bars, uh, did some motocross uh, back in the day. And, uh, but it still was very uh, strange to me. My, my uh, first choice was, uh, was sport tours, typically. Um, and I did a couple of cruisers and decided, well, this, I haven't, uh, oh, my gosh. That's what happens when it's early in the season. You stall it. I got the clutch set real light for one finger, so you got to get used to that. At any rate, uh, so I, I did a couple of cruisers, and because and, that's kind of what the crowd I was hanging with did. And I, you know, and the day I bought my first one, I won't even mention the manufacturer. Suffice it to say, it was a uh, oh, look at this guy cruising along here. It was a V twin, and uh, you know, it, it had a okay power and it rode okay and blah 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 but uh, you know the second i got it five minutes from the dealership i i said this is just all wrong this is a piece of crap um having come from stuff that has you know just kind of the stuff i was accustomed to um what i would consider uh how we doing there what i would consider standard fare um you know things like uh i don't know brakes uh, some semblance of handling, um, acceleration, which which it had, and uh, not not heaps of, and and it was there was a let me put it this way, it would accelerate, but there there tended to be a lot of vibration involved in the in the accelerating process, which I, I was used to. Uh, somehow I got introduced to uh, V4 Hondas, uh, interceptors. Uh, STs, um, mainly the interceptor class, and uh, I loved them. They were just glass smooth. Um, they were quite comfortable when I was in my uh, 20s. Um, you know, now I'm in my late 40s. It's a little little different uh, story. And they had great brakes and great suspensions, and and they just did everything uh, uh, very well. And so then I kind of went. Uh, I said, well, the cruiser's not for me, but I want comfort. I'm finally old enough I can I can buy a sofa with wheels. So I pulled the trigger on a Goldwing. And I like the Goldwing. It's a it's an excellent motorcycle. It's it's purpose built. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. But it um like most Hondas, and I'm a big Honda fan, uh I have always said that a Honda motorcycle is as practical, as reliable, and about as exciting as a good can opener. And listen, you know, think of what your life would be like if you didn't have a good can opener, right? I mean, every time you open a can and the thing slips off, you'd, you'd swear at it. You'd go, what this? I hate this can opener. But once you got a good one and it works and the can opens and, you know, listen, the getting whatever out of the can is far more exciting than opening it. Okay, well, there you have it. And there, therein lies the problem with the Honda. It's, it's devoid of a lot of personality, um, you know, and... Uh, that's a lot of it. You know, it doesn't make any strange noises. You don't feel too guilty if you don't change the oil, you know. 
you know, maybe you miss a service interval or six, and you don't really worry about it. Anyway, enter the BMW. I, I got to have something different. I just, I've been motorcycling my whole life. I need something different. And uh, then I bought a, a an enduro bike. I bought a CR 450X. You know, a, a true, you know, hot shot enduro. And I got on this thing, and and uh, I hair scrambled it for a couple of years. And I said, I'm going to kill myself um, because, uh, you know, this ain't your daddy's Oldsmobile. I mean, these things are are over the top. Now I rode some CR 500s back in the 80s, and I, and I'm telling you, I, I, I now I haven't ridden a CR 500 in 25 years, but I think the 450X would have just, you know, I think it would have just kicked its ass, thrown it straight off the cliff, and spit on it. That's that's how much more power I think these four strokes have than even the the big old two strokes. Now that might just be my imagination, and I was young. Anyway, I said, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hurt myself. But boy, I love being in the woods. I, I love doing these. I just like being, you know, on the trails and in the woods. And that's what I grew up doing. That's how I was introduced to motorcycles early on, about age 11, uh, on a little 100cc Honda Enduro, 71 SL. And, you know, even though I didn't like the GS, bottom line is the third time I test rode one, or I went to test ride one, I told the guy at the dealer, I said, you know, I've really been thinking about this bike. I can't stop thinking about this bike. It's, it's constantly on my brain. And I said, I really want to test ride it, but I mean really test ride it. Like, I want to disappear for an hour minimum. And I want you to know, be advised, that I'm going to get it, and I'm going to take it on the highway, and I'm going to go 90. Okay? Now, I probably won't go much above that, but I'm going to go 90 because I want to know what this thing is really like before I'm going to drop $20,000 on a motorcycle. Again, I'm a used Japanese motorcycle guy. Twenty grand is, my God, you can have a barn full of, of good used Japanese motorcycles. And uh, anyway, I took it out that day up in Milwaukee area. And, uh, man, it just, you know, after the fifth mile, and the more I rode it, I just said, this thing is, is fantastic. It's brilliant. And uh, I think what ultimately sold me is I went into, like, an industrial park, and it had a, uh, for lack of a better term, a cul-de-sac. And it was sections of concrete pavement. And it was, so it was quite undulated. And I was comfortable with the bike. I had ridden about 45 minutes. And uh, and I went and I kind of shot a really, not high speed, but a really high bank. And I put the coals to it a bit, uh, coming around the outside over this undulated pavement, just to really see how the tracks control, everything would handle. And I'm telling you, man, this thing didn't dive. It just it just pulled out of there like a raped cat, and it had and it it kept its composure like I can't even tell you, and that sold me. I said, man, th this thing is really sorted out. Um, and that was it. The rest of history. I bought a uh, bought a 2015 GS. Now I I will make a confession here. I did not buy the new one from the dealership. I searched around and I found a liquid cooled uh, 15. I think the one I rode was probably a 17 or something like that. Or, um, but at any rate, through traffic, let's see, that's what that says, boat launch, don't need that. Um, about the Chain Lake State Park here in uh, Lake County, Illinois. So anyway, I, I got this thing, and then every mile I put on, I love it more and more, and I've been taking it on these off-road excursions and doing these, you know, uh, kind of enduro rides, I guess, or big bike adventure rides, and having a lot of fun. And I got some buddies that are in a motorcycle, and I keep trying to, you know, because I'm selfish and I, I'm really not that good of a loner. I, I prefer to kind of be around people. Windy day out. It's blown about 30 knots today in between these storms. That'll be pretty rough uh, to be a day out there. Anyway, uh, so now I, I'm I'm slowly coaxing every every passerby, motorcycle enthusiast, even a guy that looks like he might want a motorcycle, and I. And then I tell them how great the, the BMW GS is and how you need one and everything it does and how much I, I mean, let me put it this way. My, my kind of standard line has become, people say, well, how do you like, and I, people stop at your gas stations. They want to talk to you because well, it's, it's so strange looking. You know, people go, what the hell is this thing? And you tell them and they go, well, that's kind of interesting. And, and, you know, depending on the guy's personality, you kind of got to sum them up. And, you know, you don't do this on a Sunday when church lets out. But I tell them, I said, let me tell you how much I like this motorcycle. I says, how much? I said, I it, I had an easier time 
getting off my college girlfriend than I do getting off this motorcycle. I mean, I just want to keep riding it. <laughs> um, and it, well, it treats me a lot better than my college girlfriend so far. But again, it's only got 27,000 miles on it, so give it give it time. It'll probably find a way to punish me, <laughs> both both emotionally and financially. But I'll I'll recover, you know, with a a new model year. So I just can't stop racking up miles on this thing. Um, and and every mile I put on it, the better this this motorcycle gets. Um, and and again. I could go into all the little, you know, details and nuances and, you know, oh, this is how I feel about the throttle and the clutch and the shifting and the blah, blah, blah. And, and I'll do a more detailed review, I think. But, but you know, to summarize it, um, I have ridden probably about everything under the sun, okay, with the exception of really Moto Guzzi's. haven't spent much time on those. Um, and everyone said, oh, the, you know, the GS is great. It's very neutral handling. It handles quite well. It's, you know, I got to tell you, man, there's nothing on this bike that I wouldn't try to do on a, on a CBR 600 or, uh, or the old Hurricane, uh, any of my interceptors. Um, you know, I had a buddy with the, uh, uh, what the hell was it called? Uh, uh, the early uh, Yamaha 1000s. I mean, it was a, it was a rape date. And they handled well, but uh, you know, of course, you gave up comfort, and they rode like a, you know, like a Conestoga wagon. And uh, this thing, it rides like a Cadillac. You throw it in comfort mode, and you just kind of, you just kind of bang along. Now, there's a few turns and so on and so forth in, in this uh, in this park, this state park, but it's highly patrolled, and you know, uh, you don't want to get into felonious territory. And I'll link a video uh, to some stuff we did on uh, one of the BDR rides, the uh, uh, back, route, uh, back road discovery routes, uh, where we definitely hit some twisties. And I'm on a 50-50 uh, hide now, uh, which is not the greatest tire in the world. And uh, matter of fact, I ran into a guy who was on a, I don't know what it was, CBR, I think, something like that. And uh, man, he saw me coming up his, uh, up his trumpet and he hammered down and, and he was pushing it pretty good. And I'm telling you, I was right up him. No trouble. No trouble. I had to push it a little bit, you know. But uh, so this bike will, will give you whatever degree of excitement you're looking for. I, I, I assure you it will give it to you, unless you're an absolute nut job, adrenaline junkie, um, you know, and you need to be going over 150 on a track to really, really get off. This bike's going to provide that level of, uh, of sportiness and excitement. And... You know, you don't even have to have the off-road utility to enjoy this motorcycle. The suspension is so good. I would say the only thing is black, and it doesn't have, you know, gold wing cruiser-type wind protection. But that's what, you know, that's what good gear is for. And that's the other thing. I mean, you know, you take low speed, you know, you can just do a bar lock with it. Eh, not quite a bar lock. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we can try to get a little clutch work. There she is. You know, it's just amazing how nimble and, and quick this uh this bike handle and it's uh it's not a ktm it's not a 1290 with 160 ponies it's got a i think this one's a hundred and a quarter or something like that and uh but don't 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 uh don't think it doesn't go like hell because it does um and it must because uh even on the michelin anarchies i'm hard pressed i'm getting six thousand miles out of a tire man and uh so i like the throttle you know, I've been known to, uh, my wrist has got good flexibility in it. No no joint problems there. Now the back, the knees, the hips, that's all going to hell. But the wrist, no problem there. Nope, definitely get uh, every degree of rotation necessary for uh, wide open throttle. And that's kind of it. I just I just can't say enough good things about it. And, and I think I'm going to break it down one of these days kind of bit by bit, talk a little bit about the clutch, the gearbox, which is probably some of the weak points. And and the one thing with the BMW that when you're when you're kind of jumping ship and you've never owned one, I have to tell you, the noises that it makes are to the average gear. And I'm a gearhead. I'm a mechanic, right? I've I've, I've you know turned wrenches my whole my whole life, and and they make some very uh, shall we say interesting noises. I mean, they're most of them are, are rather disconcerting. <laughs> 
And you talk to the other BMW owner, and he'll go, well, that's normal. They all they all do that. And you go to the dealer, and you say, is this shit normal? And the guy says, yeah, they all sound like that. And I say, well, I've never heard anything like that. He goes, well, I haven't either, but they all sound like that. I said, okay. And I, I had a great response from a guy on a forum. I said, you know, I think my bike's making a weird noise. And and the guy laughed. He says, he says, you find me one that doesn't, and I'll show you one where something's wrong with it, because that's what they do. And there's some goofy engineering going on, and uh, it sounds like there's maybe some tools in the motor, maybe a nut flying around in there. I'm not sure what the hell it is. But it runs fine. And, uh, you know, listen, what do we got here? 20... At 27.5 on the on the ticker, and it, you know it's running like a watch. Oil's clean, doesn't use any oil, no leaks, no no nothing to report in 30,000. Um, so you know, so far very reliable despite the uh, despite the noises. That's it. I got a buddy that's got one. He's not in love with it as to the degree that I am, but he will tell you he's got a Goldwing as well. And he and I will both tell you that if you you want to put 10 hours in the saddle. I'll tell you what, boy, you, you, you're you going to have a hard time doing it in a Goldwing or uh, or even on a, you know, even on a Harley. Um, I can't do it. I can't be at that angle. But these GSs, because of this neutral seating position, the height, the low pegs, um, you sit so naturally on it and you have the ability to kind of scoot around. The wide bars are a little more relaxed on your shoulders as opposed to anything with much sweep in it. And... Uh, you know, 10, 12 hours, and we're still going. I, I go to my vice. Are you tired? You done? Ready? He goes, nah, I can still go, you know. I mean, I'm, I'd like a shower. You know, I'm hungry. I said, well, you know, how's your how's your butt? He goes, nah, I'm fine. How about your arms? Your back? You're dead. Nah, I'm good. I said, me too. So, you know, that's something to be said. And, and uh, my buddy Ron, who, you know, we kind of co-host this, this, it's really his YouTube channel. You know, these, this, you know we're multi-hundred-thousand-mile guys. We're not a couple of weekend Asshole novices who decided, well, gee, I think motorcycles are kind of neat. We're going to go buy one. And, uh, no, I mean, we've been riding since we were kids, and we've owned a lot of machines and have lots and lots of miles. So, you know, now I, I can't tell you that I write for Cycle World or something like that and could give you a comparison across a 50 or 100 motorcycles. That's probably not true. I could probably give you 70, maybe 80 motorcycles. I've ridden a lot of friends, but... I got to tell you, man, there's a reason this GS is the best-selling motorcycle in the world. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a no-brainer once you put the, the time on one. Um, and listen, if you're not used to Enduros or dirt bikes, it might feel twitchy. It, it, it is running a 19-inch front wheel. You know, a KTM with a 21, boy, I tell you what, that'd be a that'd be a real mama on the uh, highway going 90 over some uh, some rain, uh, whatever they call that, the, the grooves they cut, the rain grooves in the road. So I don't know. I mean, I haven't spent a whole lot of time. I have ridden the uh, the 1190, and I liked it. A uh, little vibey for me. You know, it's a typical uh, parallel twin, and it's you know typically up in the you know up somewhere in the penthouse once you you know when you get up into the power. And that's another thing with this Boxer twin is that yeah, does it have a vibe to it? It does. It's got a little pulse. I'm going to call it a pulse. It's not even really a vibration. It's a pulse, and so that pulse to me is comfortable. And it is a completely different pulse than the power pulse on a V-twin because, you know, obviously a horizontally opposed engine is inherently balanced. I mean, the, you know, they're horizontally opposed. I mean, listen, guys, there's a reason. You can look at your pedals on a bicycle, okay? They didn't space them out, you know, 270 degrees. They didn't, they didn't space them out, you know, they, <laughs> right? They're 180 degrees apart, you know, and there's two of them. So it, it's kind of a natural order of things. And, and listen, now yeah, you get into the really nitty gritty about uh, three cylinder engines, and even even parallels with the 270 crank and and that kind of detail. But the pulses are very comfortable for me, and it's not too uh, vibey of a motorcycle. See, yeah, that's a pretty good lane. traction control just got there. It has light, so that's more the knobby than anything. I got a knobby hide now on here, and it just it, you get up on the edges of that thing, it just it just cooks the snot out of it. And the little ABS light says, oh, don't be a bad boy, you know. No, you mustn't do that. That's not good. And, uh, which I like. I like. I'm getting old. My reflexes aren't what they used to be. I used to be a competitive skeet shooter. Listen, I got kids that are in their 20s smoking me. That was a double-A rank. You know, so you listen, your reflexes, they're still good, right? But, you know, not necessarily like a cat. And so I like the nanny. 
the nanny does not bother me. Um, I'd probably say off road there has been occasions where the nanny kind of aggravates me, but overall I like the nanny because the nanny is there to keep things sorted out. You know what I'm saying? It's there to keep the kids in line, the house clean, the phone answered. What the hell's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with that. So, hey, let the nanny do her job. Don't bitch. Um, you know, as long as she doesn't charge you too much and the price is fair, uh, I guess, you know, it's worth having a nanny. And I guess that's how I feel about the BMW. So we're back home. That's a rather long report. And I might have to break it up into some sections. I get another good wheel there. Oh, look at that son of a gun go. See, that took about a two-foot slide on that rear tire. And I just gave it hell, but the trash control just kind of did it for me. And, again, it's, you know, these tires, I haven't ridden all this. It's still early here, and the tires are, you know, they're not scrubbed in on the sides. They're probably hard from sitting all winter. And, uh, oh, well, yeah, shit, and I got 34 pounds in the rear tire. That probably ain't helping, I'm thinking. I got a little, uh, don't tell anybody, but I got a very small like a trim uh, screw or something in the back of this thing, I need to fix that. Tire's about done, so I'm not going to bother. I just keep filling it up until I like, take this one to the dealership and get rid of it. So anyway, we're back home. Uh, I hope anybody or somebody or uh, you know finds this somewhat informative. And, and uh, we'll post another one, try to keep them a little shorter, maybe even a little more interesting, and uh, you know break down some more details of, of the GS. So uh, that's it. I, I, you know, I'm thinking about going through my yard. I think I am going to go through. And it pisses my wife off when I do this. But I just like to see, I just want to see the trees. You know, I tell my wife, I say, I'm just checking the trees, making sure that nothing looks, you know, unhealthy or anything. Oh, see, I got it, got it in rain mode here. Oh, there's the house. I need some siding still. Yeah, see, the trees look good. They're, they're relatively healthy. I got a little pine, a uh, little, I don't know what they call this. It's a fungus or something. Here, I got a, yeah, a little ditch I got to get through. Ah, there we go. You know, the neighbors think I'm a nut job, and, well, screw them. Listen, I pay my taxes. I can do what the hell I want in my yard. So, anyway, kitties, that's it. We'll uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Bye-bye.